recording in progress. Welcome everyone to the September 1st, 2022 Half Moon Bay Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee meeting. And as uh, we always do, we'll start with a roll call. Okay, committee member Foldenauer. Yes, here, sorry. No problem. Committee member Olson. Here. Committee member Ray Dupree. Is not here. Committee member Schiller. No. Committee member Standes. Here. Vice Chair White. Here. And Chair Rendon. Here. Okay. All right. Thank you. Does do we have a quorum since we have five? Yes. Okay. All right. So we have a quorum and we can move on items. Uh, the next item on our agenda is introduction of the youth representative, Chloe Standez. So Chloe, welcome and glad to have you on board. And maybe you want to share a little bit about yourself and your interests in uh, joining the BPAC. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm Chloe. I go to school at Sacred Heart Prep in Menlo Park. Um, I do Boy Scouts in Half Moon Bay. I do junior lifeguards. And I honestly just, I've lived here for 14 years. I'm 15. I'm a sophomore. Um, and I'm kind of just really interested in talking about what I'm already doing and spending kind of just because <laughs> I'm already like, I walk around a lot. I bike around a lot. Like, it's kind of just always been a really big part of my life. And so I'm interested in kind of making a difference with that. Thank you. That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you giving up your time and, and part of your evening. So welcome, welcome. And yeah, you're going to learn a lot about what's happening in Half Moon Bay. And certainly uh, as we move along, welcome your voice and opinions and thoughts on uh, the different projects, uh, initiatives that are presented. Uh, so with that, um, and the next item on our agenda is just to review the agenda. Hopefully you had a chance to take a look at it when um, the link was sent out. Um, we've got a number of items. Um, any questions or any proposed changes to the sequence of items? All right, hearing and seeing none, we will move on to D. And so you also received the minutes from our two previous meetings. Um, as you recall, we did not have a quorum at our July meeting, so we, we moved the um, the acknowledgement of the minutes uh, to this meeting. Um, any comments on the meetings or anything that needs to be changed that you saw? All right, hearing and seeing none, I think we, we just basically acknowledge that we, we reviewed and approved of the minutes. Um, with that, moving on to uh, item two, this public forum. So this is an opportunity for anybody that's uh, attending in the, from the public who wishes to speak on an item that's not on the agenda uh, to do so. And so with that, um, Sherry, do we have any public comments? We have um, four attendees here. And if anybody wants to speak, you um, raise your hand and I'll bring you over and allow you to talk. We can just... Anybody? Hey, nobody's raising their hands. Okay, great. Well, you're welcome to comment as we move along on the agenda items. Uh, we'll, we'll call for public comment. All right, so then moving on to our agenda. Oh, and, and Maz, I, I, I apologize. I, you flagged it and I, I failed to, <laughs> to take your flag. Um, I have a hard stop at eight o'clock tonight. I apologize. I've got other commitments, uh, but I think we should be able to make it um, by then. And if not, um, I will I will pass on the the chair duties um, to uh, to Brandon. Um, and so hopefully we don't we don't have to worry about that. Uh, so with that, um, we're moving on to item three, the uh, the bulk of our of our uh, our meeting tonight. So administrative items, uh, first one presentation from Marin Holt on co-side on bikes. Hi there, thanks so much for having me tonight. My name is Marin. Um, I'll share my screen and give you guys a little bit of an overview of Coast Side on Bikes. So can everyone see that? Good, okay. So um, just to give you guys an idea of Coast Side on Bikes, um, this is sort of a pandemic 
baby, I had this idea just sitting around realizing that a lot of people got into cycling during the pandemic. And as such, they were looking through the garages and unearthing old bikes that hadn't been used in years. And I realized there might be a lot out there that um, people were ready to move on and give away. And so I just started soliciting donation bikes um, online and this program was born out of that. So um, we've turned into, uh, I, I work underneath the umbrella of the Coastside Mountain Bikers 501C3. Um, and the Coastside on Bikes is a subsidiary program of Coastside Mountain Bikers. Um, we work to make the Coastside a more bicycle-friendly community by providing refurbished bikes and bike repair to those in need and advocating to ensure safe bike routes and access for cyclists on the Coastside. So just some more details. You can see a picture of us doing one of our events here that I'll tell you a little bit more about. But um, the Coastside Mountain Bikers partnered with community social service agencies to form this program. Um, we provide bike repair and bicycles for those in our community who rely on bikes as their main form of tra transportation. Um, we also advocate for safe bike routes and promote access to bikes for all in our community. So one of the major components of our uh, program is, oh, sorry, our team. Um, first of all, the Coastside Mountain Bikers um, which, as I said, is a 51C3. Uh, we also have Straight Wheel Cycling, which is going to be opening a new bike shop here in town, um, actually this weekend, um, in the old Calvary Chapel spot. Um, and that's my friend Tony, who uh, you can see pictured right here. Um, he is going to be, he's our main mechanic. He uh, helps all the rest of us when we struggle with a, a bike problem. So what we've been doing is we go out of, sorry, we also have um, youth volunteers. And so here you can see some uh, community members, some youth members who attend Hafun Bay High School. They've been helping out at our bike repair events. And I'm also able to give them community service hours because we are a 51C3. And so I can sign off on their uh, required hours that they have for school. Um, we do events at different places, but what I'll be highlighting today is our work at Abundant Grace, Coastside Worker. Um, where we've started, we started in December um, doing monthly repair events. And so our community partners so far are ALAS. We've um, been funneling a lot of our donation bikes to ALAS. They go to farm workers and other workers who rely on bikes for transportation around town. I've actually seen some bikes that were donated through Coastside on Bikes um, sitting in different, at different restaurants and different places around town. And um, people are definitely using them. Um, Abundant Grace, we do the bike repair events, and those are mainly people who rely on bikes for their main form of transportation. And so we do repair, and um, a lot of rusty bikes come through, and so we clean them up and keep them serviceable. We also work with Coastside Hope, and Coastside Hope works mainly as um, finding direct client needs. So if they have a client, for example, there was a family who needed to be able to get their students, their junior high school student to Cunha, and so we donated a bike that would fit the student and they were able to start riding their bike to school. Okay, so um, we started off calling it Bike Temple. So you may have seen it out there called Bike Temple and that's where we were working. We, we work um, monthly on Sundays at Abundant Grace. Um, we go with our team and have, we've, as you can see, we have uh, volunteer mechanics of all ages. Um, Tony's our lead mechanic each time. He's our expert. Um, and then everybody else has varying level of experience, but we've been able to work on anywhere from um, five to 10 bikes each time we've held one of these events. Um, we've done a few other community uh, events as well, and I'll talk about those in just a little bit. The other main component is the bike donations. And so we take donated bikes, um, I solicit them through our social media accounts, um, we fix them up as necessary and then donate them to our community partners. And we've had a lot of generosity from the Coastside community. The bike you're seeing right now actually is from Bob Nisbet, our former city manager, who donated this gorgeous bike. Um, and it went to Alas and it went to um, someone who works on a, one of the ranches to, to get to work. So you can see some of the donation bikes. We drop them off at Alas and then they bring them out to the ranches, usually once they get a, a critical mass of about five to ten bikes. Um, we've also done, so we've done a few other events as well. So like I said, we did the monthly bike temple bike repair event. Um, last week we had uh, Rick from Coastside Mountain Bikers was out at the high school with our youth volunteer, Nicole, who you can see the picture here. Um, and they recruited youth volunteers at Half Moon Bay High School. 
And so we're hoping to get more youth involved in the program, training them as mechanics and helping us um, in the work that we do. We were present at the Make It Main Street back to school event. We held a free bike repair there and we repaired 20 bikes in three hours with our team of, of um, volunteers. So here's so two of our youth volunteers and then we had some adults on staff as well that day. Um, just to, to backtrack a little bit, all of the uh, tools and equipment and repair supplies that we have so far were all from donations. They were all from Three Coast Idaho Mountain Bikers donations and um, other generous people in the community just to help us get started. Um, we have some upcoming events too. We're going to be at Summer's End Music Festival. We're doing free bike repair at that event on the 24th. And so far, we have refurbished and donated 82 bicycles. So since January and August, from January to August, so 82 bikes. Um, so it's been a pretty good volume and a pretty steady flow of bikes coming through. Uh, right now, um, we have some additional components that have been pretty exciting, just getting the youth involved, um, getting the Half Moon Bay High School students and Cunha students as well. Uh, we even have little ones who are learning skills right alongside their parents. And so that's been a fun community aspect to this. Um, it's also been interesting for the youth volunteers. Many of them are, are mountain bikers, but for them to see that people in our community rely on their bikes as their main form of transportation has been eye-opening and I think a good learning experience for those, those youth. We've also done a, a lock and a light campaign where um, in, with each bike that we give, we give a lock and a light so that the people can secure their bikes and also um, be safe when riding at night, especially along the highway where we have some pretty dangerous corridors if people are out there on their bicycles. So um, with each each bike donation comes that set um, if, if people require it. Um, we've also started doing some advocacy as well. And this is where um, I've worked with um, Carlene just a little bit recently um, about identifying dangerous intersections where kids are crossing um, this was the one at um, Kelly and Highway 1 where there's no signage. And so um, just as people kind of tell me about things like this, we've, we've started to advocate a little bit more for, for safe routes and for um, just bike, bike safety in town in general. Um, our funding sources so far, we have individual donors through Coastside Mountain Bikers, um, Straight Wheel Cycling. Tony has been extremely generous in donating his time and expertise. Um, he's also helped out with components as well. Um, we had the Coastside Gives annual day of giving that funded Coastside Mountain Bikers, and so that helped buy some of our equipment. And we've had all these, you know, 82 different people who have donated bikes over the last year. Um, we also um, were written into the SMCTA grant, which um, I'm still going to be learning about next week when I meet with Maggie at the city, but um, that's hopefully a, a way to keep us going for, for the time being. One of the big challenges is that I've been doing all of this out of my garage. So there's a picture of my garage and I have to um, thank my husband publicly for putting up with this and being really supportive and uh, helping set up a bike shop. It's, it looks a little different now, but essentially we have had a huge volume of bikes coming through. And um, in the future, I'm gonna be looking for a place to house those that is not right in our tiny little garage. So the vision of this program is to continue doing repair events, monthly repair events and other community bike repair events as needed. Um, continue with the bike matching program with our community partners, um, hoping to find a storage or re and repair facility to house the bikes and the tools and all the spare components and parts that we have. And then I'm also kind of moving us into the advocacy and action, um, working towards making Half and Bay a more bike friendly community. So that's, those are the future goals and the vision for the program. So um, I wanted to just see if anyone had any questions about the work we've been doing. Thank you for listening. Well, thank you. That was awesome. I mean, this is like, you've done a lot and I'm so happy to see just how you're engaging with um, all kinds of community participants. And um, I mean, th this is so in line with what, um, the BPAC is all about. So hopefully you, you will you will stay engaged with us and, and attend other meetings because uh, the things that you touched on is exactly what we're trying to do is to to create um, better infrastructure and, and and create those those safe routes for both bicyclists and pedestrians. So um, so thank you. But I'll, I'm going to open up to the rest of the committee for comments or questions. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I just wanted to mention, like, I definitely think that getting safer bike paths and just having a safer biking kind of area and community in general is, like, really important for Half Moon Bay because I feel like, I mean, like, I know people and I have, like, definitely, like, almost been hit a bunch of times just kind of biking. Just, I feel like there's definitely, like, we really, that's an issue that kind of we need to work on is, like, the bike safety. Great. Thank you, Chloe. Uh, Brandon. Uh, thanks for that presentation. I looked at your website. I saw you needed a bunch of tools and things. Uh, two questions. One, what do you most need right now? And two is, if someone donates, how do they make sure that the money goes to you since you're sitting under Abundant Grace 5013C? Good question. So, um, if you donate to if you donate money directly to Coseta Mountain Bikers, um, you can earmark it for the the program. Um, Coseta on Bikes, just you know, mention that when when you donate. There's, I think, there I believe there's a box you can fill in. Um, also, what we need most right now, I think, um, we need consumables such as bike cables and things like that. Those are kind of our ongoing needs. But my biggest need is just a simply a place to store the bicycles. And um, that's where I'm hoping that the SMCTA grant is able to come in and help out a little bit. I worked with um, Bob Nisbet and um, Maggie, the, the grant writer at the city, a little bit on working that piece into the grant so that um, we can be housed somewhere. Um, so I'm hoping the city has maybe an opportunity for a location or a storage shed or something like that where we can just have a house to live in that's not my garage. I think we all would like bigger garages. I've been on the outlook for renting garages here in town. I can't find one. Um, the, but on your website, you have all these tools you need. Is that what you're talking about? It was like a hundred and some dollars. I added it all up. I just didn't know how to get it to you. Like you have uh, lube and things like that. Yeah, we have a, a kind of an ongoing wish list of the consumable type of things and the things that we need. I, I, we actually need to update that list because we have received some of those things and we have a pretty comprehensive toolkit right now. So when we go out to these events, we have pretty much everything we need right now, which oh, is been great. Yeah, I, I think the, the future needs are going to be, you know, lube you always use, cables you always use, cable housing, things like that. Um, so I just need to update that a little bit. It's basically been just a small team of us running it so far. And so we're trying to do all the different components of the program. I think it's a cool thing. I think that lights are vitally important and I will, I don't know how you're funding it all, but I, I will help with that. Uh, I'm, I ride with four lights on my bike. I ride route one four or five times a week down to as far as da uh, Santa Cruz. And it's just, see some of these people biking on route one without lights it's suicide um i just don't care if you have a good expensive bike or a cheap bike or whatever it is you got to have lights. so um i'll talk to you offline about that but thanks right. thank you thank you brandon other comments or questions oh Car carlene uh, yes, I just wanted to say thank you, Marin. You've been an awesome partner so far and really looking forward to working with you more in the future um, on events as well as, you know, projects, infrastructure type projects. And just thank you. Thanks, Carlene, for involving us and inviting us to the different events. Anything else from the other committee members? All right, seeing none, um, thank you again. Uh, truly, truly awesome work that you're doing and uh, definitely would want to stay engaged with you and your efforts. Um, Thanks a lot, so, thank you for keep in touch. Yep. So with that, we're gonna move on to um, number two, support letter for Eastside Parallel Trail. And Maz, I will turn that over to you. Thank you, Mario. Uh, Chair Mario and everyone. Um, pleasure to see everyone. I, I'm sorry I wasn't able to make the last um, BPAC meeting. Um, but yeah, so this item, I'm actually just going to introduce Ray Rizavi, our project manager. Um, he is going to provide a couple of uh, slides and um, we'll go from there. Ray, take it away. Thank you very much, Moz. Uh, thank you, Chair Mario. Uh, let me see if I could share the uh, uh, the screen here real quick.
Okay, let's see. Uh, device. I'm trying to use my laptop here and I'm not sure exactly how this works with Zoom. My apologies. Uh, okay. Anybody could see my uh, screen by any chance? Um, we're we're seeing your screen, but the back end, not the. Um, there we go. Now you're on the presentation. So if you want to try the presentation view, I think we might be able to see it now. Do you see it now? Do you see the presentation now? It's yeah. no. It's the background. I mean, it's it's the full PowerPoint document, but I think you can work off that. Okay. All right. Uh, oh, it switched back. It's on now. Okay. Hold on one second. Okay. Share screen. Okay. Start that. You're just sharing the wrong screen. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. It's okay. If you can toggle to the presentation, that should work. Okay. Let's see here. There you go. I okay. See Wonderful. You see it? Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So this is what we call the uh, last link on the, um, uh, it's called Pacific Coast Bicycle Pedestrian Connectivity North. This is the last segment of uh, the Highway 1 on the north side. This is parallel to Highway 1. As you see on the screen, this is the location map. Uh, the county's proposed multi-use trails coming from the north to the city limit. And the Naomi Padish Trail goes up uh, in parallel to Highway 1 up to about Roosevelt. So the segment that you see with the dashed line, that, that is the segment that we're looking for. This is 0.3 miles. Um, of the trail that goes on the east side of Highway 1. Uh, it connects all the way down, obviously, to Half Moon Bay High School, um, at downtown Half Moon Bay, et cetera. And uh, we're zooming in the, in the close uh, view of it, and uh, you will see the existing path, the 10-foot wide path on the south side coming up up to Roosevelt. Uh, this is the missing link. It's about 0.3 miles. We're going to extend the 10 foot wide path with the two foot shoulders that are uh, decomposed granite Just all the way to do, do you mind a quick point of clarification? The sure. lower right hand part of this slide says that the existing 10 foot wide class one path continues south to Main Street. It does not. Uh, on the east side of the highway, there is no path from Correct. Main so Street. So it crosses, it crosses at Rousseau Francais to the west side. and and goes all the way down to uh, Main Street. Uh, on the east side, we're, we're uh, planning to continue that path on. We have two projects in the work. Uh, one is already funded that extends it from Main Street to Spindrift, and one with the one we, uh, uh, from Spindrift all the way to Rousseau Francais, including uh, the bridge over Frenchman's Creek. Uh, we're uh, applying for funding for that one for design. Uh, the Lovely. southern okay. portion. The southern portion has been designed, and on Tuesday, we're going to actually to city council. We have $8.5 million grant from San Mateo County Transportation Authority to improve both the highway and build a retaining wall to put the path on. Okay. So that's going to go to construction in 2023, hopefully knock on wood. And uh, we're hoping that we get the design funding for the northern portion from Spindrift that connects uh, to uh, across Frenchman's Creek through Sous Francais. So we would have the path on both sides eventually. But at the moment, on the south side, this path does go, you are correct, does go over to Sous Francais. Thank you for clarifying. And okay. goes on the west side as Naomi Patrick. Great. Sorry to have interrupted. Go ahead. Uh, so this project is, um, the cost is estimated as $1.6 million. This is the updated cost based on the county's project that uh, received a bid a few months ago. Um, the, correct, uh, the current funding is uh, from City of Half Moon Bay, about $35,000. Uh, the Transportation Authority currently has $315,000 and MTC $350,000, a total of $700,000. The local funding total between Half Moon Bay and MTC 
is considered local funding is 385,000, which is about 25, 24% of the project. The plans are 90% complete. Um, we are doing the peer process for Caltrans. Biological st studies have already been completed and circulated. Uh, we have the draft environmental document almost completed. It's coming out this week and it's gonna be circulated uh, with a four to one mitigation. We have some impact to the willows. Uh, the bridge type selection is underway and the County of San Mateo construction uh, has already started on the north side. So uh, we are planning to apply for the uh, cycle six of the transportation authority for measure A bike and pet that's coming up is due to September 23rd. And we would love for BPAC to support us uh, with the support letter we already have obtained one, thank you to Carlene, uh, from the uh, school district. And this would be our second support letter. And we're hoping to get a third support letter, hopefully from the uh, Silicon Valley Bicycle Coalition. And if any other ideas about uh, additional support letters, we would really appreciate it if you let us know where you recommend so we can have a strong application going in. Uh, there's gonna be an intense competition, as you know, for these funding. So um, we would appreciate any kind of input or help you can give us. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Um, this is great. Uh, you know, basically filling in the gaps. And yes. I think, you know, the, the, that uh, this goes back to Marin's presentation in terms of, you know, uh, these, these little pockets where it's not as safe as it could possibly be for, for cyclists. So. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think we can have the discussion with the committee, but I think we'd love to uh, uh, have the letter of support that was included in the packet, um, uh, you know, sent on behalf of the, the BPAC. So um, any discussions, questions for Ray? All right, I am not seeing any. So, um, Maz, do we need to vote on sending a letter? Oh, Carly, I see your hand. Uh, really, I just wanted to make a comment that I have already made to Ray to kind of everyone here is that, um, and although it's not a part of this project, but what I would love to see happen is that at Main Street, that we continue a path up to the high school and then we would have a complete you know, you, the high schoolers could directly go to school. They would get right on Lewis Foster Drive pathway and they'd be at the school. So it's just a pretty short distance if we could eventually work on getting that trail. I mean, my mindset right now is let's make the trail go directly to the schools. You know, we're doing that at El Granada with the multimodal trail with the county. It's going to go right up to the school. Um, you know, the more we can do that, the more likely families are going to want to um you know, choose active transportation. That, that, that's a very good comment. Thank you, Carlene. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk to our consultant also. Uh, we have to see what the right of way is and if the right of way is, is available, uh, it would be very easy to do. So I'll talk to uh, Moz and also our planning, make sure every, everybody's on board with it. Thank you. Thank you. Other thoughts, comments, questions for Ray? All right, seeing none. So Maz, do you need a, a roll call vote in support of sending the letter or can we just um, say that we all agree? I, I, think, I think generally speaking, it would be good to get a quick roll call vote. Okay. All right, in which case I'll need a motion um, in a second. So moved. Okay, I have a motion. Um, who, who will second? I'll I second. Will. Oh, there you go. You got it. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Uh, we'll need a roll call vote, please, Sherry. Okay, sorry about that. Um, committee member Foldenauer? Yes. Member Olson? Yes. Committee member Ray Dupree? Yes. Committee member Stand Committee member Sandez? Yes. Vice Chair White? Yes. And Chair Rendon? Yes. All right. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank everyone. you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sarah. How are you? Thank you. Looks like it's gonna be a
terrific project. Mm -hmm. I, I certainly hope that, uh, you know, uh, Maria will, will come in and uh, with the rest of you BPAC members will come and uh, do the ribbon cutting, definitely. Groundbreaking and then the ribbon cutting. It should, it should be uh, a very good project. Absolutely. Connecting. All right, moving on with our agenda. So next is number three, the e-bike survey update. And uh, Maz, I'll, I'll turn that back over to you. Thank you, Mario. Um, I'm going to actually introduce Jonathan Wu, our assistant engineer. Um, he, as uh, most folks know, um, he's been on our grid team for a while, and um, he's going to give us an, a quick update on where we are with our um, e-bike survey and uh, a couple of other, the next item as well. Jonathan, you're up. Thank you, Maz. Uh, good evening, BPAC uh, committee, uh, members of the public. It's very very awesome to be here. Um, thank you for your time. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the e-bike survey um, that we have actually posted already. We've presented this to city council um, in the last meeting. I believe it was last Tuesday. Uh, so if you haven't heard, we have an e-bike survey that is posted on our city's website at the link provided um, on your screen over there on the top. And we've also additionally posted uh, six signs or six posters uh, on a few A-frames um, at the locations provided. So we have one at Rousseau Francais and Highway 1 along the East Side Parallel Trail, uh, North Main Street and Highway 1 along the uh, no Naomi Patrick Trail, Kelly Avenue Highway 1 along the Na Naomi Patrick Trail as well, the Kelly Ave and Coastal Trail, uh, Poplar Street, with Highway 1 and the uh, at the Naomi Patch Trail again, um, as well as the Poplar Street and Coastal Trail. So we have uh, those six locations, which has um, which basically looks like the picture on the top right of your screen. Um, and it allows you to use your phone or mobile device to scan the barcode or uh, not barcode, but the QR code. And it leads you directly to that website for you to uh, access and take that survey if you'd like. Uh, one thing to note, again, this is a reminder since we did provide this information back at City Council, um, the last day to complete this survey would be September 15th. Mm -hmm. And you know, those questions that we have on the survey, a uh, couple examples are, the, you know, your frequency of trail usage, um, your main purpose of using the trail, and there's much more other questions that um, help us to better understand um, your usage and your feelings of the trails that you guys are using within Half Moon Bay. So at this moment, um, we did receive a total of 76 full responses, um, and we're hoping to get even more um, before the last day to complete the survey. Um, and it's just a quick update, so that's pretty much it. But if you have any other questions, I'd be happy to um, attempt to answer them. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, appreciate the update. Uh, comments, questions from the committee? Uh, Carly. So I don't know if this was talked about before and I missed it at the last meeting, but you know, what, what are we trying to do with the information that we get from the survey? If you said that, I missed that. Oh, so I, I didn't mention that, but um, the information we're trying to get from the survey, uh, I think we talked about this from a previous um, uh committee meeting that we had was about e-bikes, e-scooters, e-motorboards e and, and such. So we're just getting a better understanding of how the community feels um, about those usages, um, where a lot, which trails along Half Moon Bay do people feel comfortable with those usages. Um, you know, it, it, it's more of a feel from what the community um, believes and how they how they perceive these uh, e-motorized uh, scooters, bikes, boards, and et cetera. And then, yeah, and if I may, Jonathan, um, add, it will, so the, the intent is to get feedback so that it would uh, provide that information to um, the members in our council uh, for a discussion regarding any changes on policy regarding those items on our trails, whether it's the Coastal Trail or the Naomi Patrick or Eastside Parallel. Um, that's that's the main point of this effort is to really hear from the community to inform those decision makers. Thank you, Maz. 
And I see Brandon has his hand up. Yeah, thanks. I, I just want to follow up on that. I thought we spent several meetings on this discussing e-bikes and all the different categories and what we effectively could and could not do. I think we had a meeting even with the parks because the way the path goes into the parks. So I, I'm not saying I, I love I love surveys. I'm just wondering what exactly prompted this and are we coming back around to this idea? So I, I can touch a little bit on that. Um, so this was, so we had a conversation at the city council, um, I wanna say probably in the last couple of months. So this item went to the city council for discussion. There was some comments back and forth and I think there was uh, a consensus within the council that they wanted to hear more from uh, from folks. And so that was the direction from city council was to go out with, a, with some more um, uh, surveys to get a little bit better community input um, and then to come back and have and continue that conversation. So it's not that we're starting over or going coming back circle. It was just uh, council felt they wanted another opportunity to get uh, additional community feedback before um, they moved forward with any major changes. Are they thinking, I, I'm not saying that I don't oppose them. I almost got run over by one the other day, but um, I'm just, are they, is the city council considering making changes currently? Because we, I understand now and I appreciate it. We gave recommendations and I remember that was going to city council and, and I didn't watch that meeting or meetings. So I'm, I apologize that I'm not the speed mods there, but so they came back and said, we may make changes and now we want to survey and discuss it more basically. I think the, I think the consensus has been that we, there some policy needs to be written to address some of these. We have some older policies that um, don't really, uh, don't really fit to this uh, to these types of uh, new devices. A lot of it's deal dealing with motorized, um, you know, motorized equipment and gas-powered equipment. So, I think that that that's a big part of it is to um, really understand um, kind of that how that impacts. Um, so, yeah, it's if if um, so. Ultimately, we will have some. Uh, formal policies and recommendations uh, to codify to codify in the Armenian code, um, and in this, it, I, I don't know if the count from the conversation at the council level, it, it, there was a lot of uh, thoughts pro, uh, for and against the the uh, approval of e-bikes, and that that was a difficult uh, decision. Um, so that's that was part of the reason and rationale for going and getting more feedback to help um, educate and, and uh, provide that input to our council so they can make that decision. Um, so there will be some sort of, I think we just, we need to have some sort of policy and, and, and codify this in our mini code. Um, it's uh, just a matter of how we approach it because there's been discussions about speed limits versus the types of e-bikes. And so those are, the, those are some of the details that we're hoping to get more information on um, so that we can make that informed decision at the council level. The only thing that I'll, uh, I'll say, and then I'll shut up, is this is all great. It's a lot of time spent, but we spent time on it. And the bottom line is, doesn't sound like we have any enforcement anyway. So I, I don't mean to say rules without enforcement don't matter, but rules without enforcement don't matter. So um, I just would, I don't know how to convey that to the city council or how we do that, but it's, it's always interesting to have the debate in a vacuum, but then the reality is, okay, if you want to make, I don't care, pick your choice, whatever one of these categories you don't want, what's what's that matter? And how how are we are we going to allocate money now to a, to a, a bike path cop? I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just saying that's, an, that's something that needs to be discussed. And then we need to coordinate with the parks and rec for the parks where the paths run through. I'm saying blinding flash of the obvious, but not everybody understands that, that you know, we as the city don't own some of that path because it's park. So I'm just putting it out there. I appreciate you understand it and I'm not against surveys. I just, you know, we go through all this work and then it, and then what happens is we create a policy that says no X bike. And then everybody sees X bikes out on the path and the public comes back and says, you, you as the city, all of us made a decision and it's still out there. What are you going to do? And it just leads down this path. No pun intended. Thank you, Brandon. Appreciate that. Um, Carlene, I thought I saw your hand up again. No, uh, no, I think my question was answered. Thank you. 
Okay. Um, any other um, questions, comments on this topic? Um, anybody from the public, public comment on this topic? I don't see any hands raised. Okay, great. All right, um, Jonathan, thank you for that update. And I guess we're moving on to the Kelly Avenue Crosswalk Project update. Thank you, Chair. I'll, I'll take this one again. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm here to provide a little update on the Kelly Avenue Crosswalks project. And um, just for those that aren't, you know, fully aware of it, but I'm, I'm sure you guys uh, are at the moment. Uh, we did some improvements at the Pillar Citos and Kelly Avenue intersection, as well as the Alsace Lorraine and Kelly Avenue intersection, uh, not too long ago, a month or two ago. And at the Pillar Citos intersection, we added some uh, flashing beacons, as you can see on the bottom left of your screen, um, with some uh, pedestrian crossing signs. Um, we added a couple of new and reamped and re uh, did some new crosswalks along that intersection, repainted a little bit of the, the stop signs and uh, did a little, just a little bit of improvements within that intersections by making some new ADA, uh, ADA ramps. Uh, if you kind of look towards the middle of your screen, um, moving on to the Alsace Lorraine intersection, uh, we added again, two new crosswalks and it's a little bit tough to see, but with those kind of um, coned arrows, that's where we have a speed table. Um, and we got, we did get a little bit of a, a feedback from it, um, mentioning that the speed table didn't really look like, you know, a speed bump. We, we did get a few residents that kind of um, message us about that. But the reasoning is for um, fire truck access, uh, making sure that they're able to go through that speed bump with ease um, in case if there is an emergency at the beach or anywhere downtown. So we do we are restricted to a certain height and the reasoning for not being as largely effective is because of the width of that speed table. Um, so we I could get that into uh, I could get a little bit more into that if you know if necessary, but I'll just move on for uh, the sake of the presentation. Um, but we also did some mid block improvements by adding some um, radar flashing uh, radar speed uh, feedback signs that provide uh, drivers speed um, as they're driving through and to hopefully notify them of their speed when they're traveling through the corridor to know, let them know that they are either going too fast or if they're traveling the correct speed or less. Um, so we wanted to you know thank the community for their patience throughout this project this one to two month project and definitely want to thank the cabrillo unified school district for their support and uh and their contribution and funding um and definitely want to thank the contractors for helping us out with this project as well so this project's pretty much done we're just wrapping up with the final paperwork and we'll, we'll get that finished up if i may add just one other point. Um, yeah, I, I've I've driven the speed table too, and I've um, it is uh, it is definitely a very minor speed table. I feel I feel that um, you know, if you go th if somebody blows through it, they would feel it. But it is on the minor end. I would be uh, remiss if I did not mention that one of the one, another one of the factors in the narrow in the small profile was also making sure that we kept ADA uh, ADA. Um, standard across the crosswalk and the ramps adjacent. That was one of the other limiting factors, unfortunately, that did not allow us to put much more of a hump into it. Thank you, Boz. Brandon, you have a question? Well, I just have to ask it. Um, I understand the height and I appreciate that, Moz. My question really isn't the height, it's the, it's the um, angle of how smooth it is. Because you could, you could, I'm not saying you, maybe there's a reason you can't, but you can make that, you could make that steeper and that's what would slow people down. It's not necessarily always the height, it's the steepness of the angle. So I'm just, look, my lens is I live in the neighborhood. I drive that intersection all the time. I know how many people blow through it. Uh, and we do get support from the sheriff who sits in, uh, and I think that's uh, Thomas driveway there on the side, but 
and that's great, but it doesn't always happen. And it is dangerous when bikes come through there and whatnot. Um, but I think overall, I'm grateful for all the work that everybody did, did. And I know that sometimes this sort of work looks like, oh, you just did this or didn't do that. But uh, the amount of permitting and amount of work that all of you have to do paperwork wise, I am intimately familiar with, and it's a significant amount of work. So I'm grateful and thankful for all that you did. And my feedback isn't being critical. It's just asking, um, would that be possible to make it more, uh, to make it slower? I don't, you know, I don't think all of us who are locals are perfect. So I'm not saying it's always out of town people, but on the weekends, as we all know, that is the main corridor for most people to go to Kelly Beach. So is that at all possible or is that not possible at all? It, um, if I may through the chair, it is it is possible. We'll just have to do a lot more grading work. And so when, when we, when it, Kelly Avenue is actually one of the pro, one of the streets on our list for um, uh, street improvements as far as the pavement se section. So when we do come back to do that, there uh, I think there is an opportunity for us to take a closer look at that. Um, I think the fire department may have had some of an impact as well on that profile design, but I think we can try to push that to the limit a little bit more um, with that uh, street resurfacing project that'll be coming up in the next year or two. Thanks a lot, man. Of course. Thank you, Brandon. Carly. Just, I just want to say thank you guys so much. This is something we've wanted for so long. We are very grateful for this. It makes it much safer for the students to, you know, hatch, go into Cunha. There's a lot of students in that intersection. And I know there were a lot of complaints at Elsass Lorraine. And so I hope people are mostly happy with the changes. And I love the, you know, the speed signs, because to me that works. If I'm going, you know, over the speed limit and I see that, it, it it works for me, so I hope it's working for everyone else. I don't know. I hope you've received some positive feedback on that. Have you? <laughs> I'm curious. We we have. There's been a few uh, neighbors uh, that have come up to us and thanked us for the speed radar side specifically, as well as the other improvements. But you know, thank everybody's been very uh, very supportive, um, and I'm glad that this project was able to achieve some of the safety uh, measures that we've been needing over here. Those signs are, those speed things are staying just to follow up on that. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, somebody asked me, they said, well, those are going away. I said, no, they're not. So, <laughs> yeah, we, we, we've, we have in the past used our, um, the sheriff's uh, speed trailer, and that is a mobile unit, and we do still have that. Um, but in this location, with the amount of um, speeding complaints and concerns, it made sense to have a permanent fixture. Yeah, thanks a lot for doing that. All right, any other comments or questions on this item? Uh, any public comment on this item? No hands are raised. All right, uh, then thank you, Jonathan. Um, we will move on to the next item, grants update. Thank you, Chair. I'll um, take this one. Um, nice to see everyone again. Uh, Moz Bozzergenia City Engineer. I just wanted to um, provide a quick update on some of the grant applications that we have worked on, some of the responses we received. Um, it's with the with um, all these different calls for funding, um, the notices of funding opportunities coming from the federal side. Um, it's been a pretty busy grants season, I would say. And we've been um, working hard on trying to find uh, funding for our many projects that are uh, still, whether it's missing gaps like our uh, segment four, the Pacific Coast Bikeway Project, um, or others. Um, we've been working hard on trying to get that. So I, I just want to provide a little update on where we are on some of those things. Um, so I, I think these are all grants that have you, that this committee's seen. So um, uh, if you have any background questions, I won't provide too much background, but if you have any questions, I'm always happy to dive into it. So the one Bay Area grant uh, cycle three pro uh, grant application we submitted for our Kelly Avenue complete street project. Um, the scope of work from that one was from uh, Main Street to the uh, to the beach. Um, and unfortunately, we uh, did not receive that grant. Um, we just got the ranking sheet and um, we were just off of the funding 
um, the funding uh, uh, avail availability that was there. So um, we ranked pretty close. If there was a little bit more money, I think we would have been able to, to get some funding for that project, but unfortunately we didn't. So we will continue looking for opportunities on that one. And um, we have a grant, we have a grant application. So it's, you know, we're, we're hoping to reuse that and, and um, submit for other opportunities as soon as they come around. Um, we have also heard back from a couple of grant applications uh, that we've submitted, and it's positive news. We have, um, yeah. through the San Mateo County so Transit Authority, I'm we have, for, through the um, uh, San Mateo County Transit Authority, we have, we had two applications uh, for the Alternative Congestion Relief and Transportation Demand Management Grant Program. Uh, the first one was, uh, you heard a little bit about that, which was the pedal for a purpose. Uh, that was the grant that the city submitted towards uh, e-bike subsidies uh, towards low-income uh, uh, individuals. Um, and we will be working with uh, Coastside on Bikes uh, and Maggie to, to discuss how that uh, will look like. Um, we also received uh, $100,000 uh, for a mid-Coastside TDM plan, Transportation Demand Management Plan. This one is great. Um, we are actually co-applicants with the County of San Mateo. And um, so what this is going to do is uh, we are going to jointly go out and get a consultant to, to take a closer look specifically at TDM elements that will help the coast side, not just Half Moon Bay, not just pockets of the county, but it as a whole. And I think that's been one of the key things that's been lacking with uh, some of the studies that's been happening um, over the last several years. We have Connect the Coast and some of the other efforts. We have our own city bicycle pedestrian master plan. But all of these documents, as much as we have solicited uh, out re uh, input and comments, and that goes for the county too, it still seems to have some disconnect uh, between city and county. And so the, all, the nice thing on this one is we will be doing a joint project with outreach, community outreach, getting input, looking at specific uh, measures like park and ride, ride lots that make sense in current certain locations. Um, there's a whole uh, list of items that will be analyzed as part of this. Um, and of course, the big piece is going to be the public outreach and input process. So um, that the good news is we've been, we've been notified that um, we are, we have been, um, we are going to be recommended by the staff for approval of those two uh, grant applications, and we'll um, the board, the TA board, will be making that determination coming up in uh, on the fifteenth of September. I also wanted to mention that we have some uh, applications in uh, for some other of our bike projects, uh, the segment two, which is the um, Eastside Parallel Trail that Ray mentioned from Spindrift to Rousseau Francais, including the bridge over Frenchman's Creek. Um, we actually have a, uh, we, we are actually on that one, we actually have an earmark uh, through the Senator, uh, through Congresswoman Jackie Spears office. Um, so hopefully we may be getting some funding there and we will know in November, December. Um, so that's great news. It's some wonderful, it's some money to really get us started on the environmental and um, design uh, process. Um, so that's a, a great thing. We're also looking at other funding sources we've submitted for the active transportation program. Um, I don't have any updates on that program yet. They're still reviewing and ranking applications. Um, but yeah, we've been um, we've been putting in quite a bit of applications, and we're continuing to do so. Um, and so we'll, I think I'll probably continue providing updates on where we are with grants as we um, at our next meeting as well. So you guys can probably expect to hear more on money and how much we're getting and how much more we need. Um, so yeah, that's it for my quick update. If there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you, Maz. Uh, questions, comments from the committee? All right, uh, Brandon. Oh, Brandon, I think you're on mute. Yeah, maybe maybe the gremlin saying be quiet. Um, the, my quiet, I don't have to see the right time. If it's not, let me know. I was wondering about the road surfacing outside and surrounding town. And I had, someone told me that there was uh, an article in the newspaper about cyclists in Half Moon Bay um, 
not liking the new road surfacing. I'm not how many how familiar people are, but with Verde and Higgins and stage and I know that it is outside of city limits, but I do know from Maz and all of his work that coordinating with um, the county highway people that they do listen to us. Is there any feedback on that that you know about or that we could put input, although they already started this disastrous um, paving? Yeah, it's it's unfortunate. So yeah, they um so they have this uh they're doing a chip seal treatment on the pavement. So basically they do um a th an oil, a thick oil spread with um basically fine aggregate rock. It's pretty jagged and I I think we've gotten some complaints and concerns regarding um road rash and you know, any issues with folks falling off of bikes and things it's of that It's usually nature. it's it's dangerous not only to the bikes, it's dangerous to the cars and the motorcycles. And I know it's outside of town limits, so I'm saying that, but a lot of people from this town cross those town limits reg almost every single day. And it affects us and it limits us now to not being able to go east to get protection from Route 1, which means that we're not going to stop riding. I mean, that would be crazy. So we're, we're going to be more on Route 1. Is there, I mean, some of those roads don't even need it. And you could say I'm an armchair expert, but if you ride 40,000 miles you on a bike, you see a lot. So is there anything like feedback or is this just, I mean, are we just not going to, they're just going to do it and that's the way it's going to be. No, I think, I think the feedback is important. Um, I, I have a good line of communication with the um, deputy director at the county that is um, overseeing the streets and roads. Um, so I can contact Coavo and talk to him about it. So the chip seal is, um, so it's a little bit more than just a slurry. The chip, the aggregate rock actually provides some structural support, which is why they want to do it, is because um, they want to continue and keep the longevity life of the road itself. Um, otherwise, if they, if, we do, if they don't do it, it will over time degrade. Um, and this is, a, you know, it's obviously a more cost-effective method than an overlay. Um, however, there are other types of treatments that are very similar. Um, one is a cape seal, which essentially is a chip seal, but then they come in and basically add, they call it a cape seal because they put like a cape of new a new slurry on the top. So what that does is you get your structural th you know depth, you get that protection, you you try you keep the pavement from alligator cracking and and having those deformities, but you also have the clean smooth surface because you close the top and you seal it with an oil layer. So I can talk to them and see if that's something that we can consider and look at. And um, I will say this with chip seals, after some time, it does get uh, embedded into the oil even further. So after some time, it will actually smooth out a little bit more. Some of the aggregate will get lost. Some of it will get pushed down. So it's not going to be permanent. You know, like, uh, this, this configuration is not going to stay permanent. However, it will take some time to get to that point. It's two, so, it's two plus months. Yeah, or any so, decent bike that's not a mountain bike to be able to ride on those roads. Yeah. But I don't want to belabor so, it. I'm grateful to everybody being patient. There's there are an aggregate of us who do ride those and are impacted, and it just it's just really painful. I will definitely bring that up with the county and see if we can get them to Thank switch you. to this Cape Seals. Thanks a lot. Of course. Other comments or questions? Anything from the public? No. Nope. Okay. Um, so thank you, Miles. Appreciate the info on the grants. Um, some good news. Hopefully more good news on the horizon. Um, so with that, we'll move on over to staff announcements. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'll just, just a couple of quick ones. Um, I think most folks know, um, but we have a new city manager, Matthew Chittister, who was appointed at one of the last city council meetings. Um, so just wanted to make that, uh, if you don't know, uh, Matthew's been, a, uh, grew up on the coast side. He's been the um, deputy city manager for God, I have six years now, coming up on six years. Um, and yeah, he's he's a wonderful person to work with. So if you get a chance, when you get a chance to see him, um, uh, you, please do go and uh, congratulate him and, um, 
you know, he's very open and loves talking to folks. So please seek him out if you haven't already. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention was, unfortunately, um, we, we will, we're going to city council on, on Tuesday the 6th. Um, our Main Street uh, safety project, um, unfortunately, we had we went out to bid, we received bids, and we had some protests. There were some issues with the lowest bidder. Um, and so unfortunately, we're going to be rejecting all the bids. Um, so what that means is we are not going to be able to complete that project this season. Um, the slurry plants close up around uh, the end of October. Um, and so it's based on the weather conditions. The plants aren't going to open up until next spring. So we're going to go and rebid this project um, and hopefully resolve any irregularities way before we get to the springtime and go out to construction um, early to early next year. Um, that, those are the only two updates I wanted to provide. If there's any questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you, Maz. Any questions, Carly? Sorry about that. Um, I'm just curious if there's any updates regarding Kelly and Highway 1 as far as replacing, I know you were working on the, are we, when we're going to replace those small lights and, you know, just kind of what are some of the interim things we can do to make it safer, especially at that pork chop Island, um, anything new on that? Sure. I'm um, unfortunately nothing new from the Caltrans side. I've been um, contacting the uh, project manager for that large project along the corridor, um, seeing if they can provide us some support. I've been talking to the um, electrical group at Caltrans. Um, and so for folks that aren't aware, um, there was an accident a few months back where a number of signals were, were hit and taken down on Kelly um, and Highway 1. Um, on the northbound side uh, on the pork chop island that Carlene mentioned. And unfortunately, um, the material supply issues have the, the signal poles are always hard to get a, get a hold of. Um, unfortunately, they don't they're on back order and so they're waiting for those new materials to come in to be able to erect the signals back to its existing condition. In the meantime, I've been uh, pushing and asking whether they can do any other temporary improvements because visibility of the signals have been an issue. Um, I've heard it from members of this committee. I've heard it from other members outside of the committee. Um, I've seen it myself, um, especially on a foggy morning when you're coming up, uh, when you're coming northbound up to Kelly, it can be hard to see it. So um, I'm gonna continue pushing hard and seeing if we can get that um, and I may may need to bring Ray, my big guns, to help me get uh, Caltrans to do something over there because it is a it is a problem. And um, the last I heard, as far as the delivery, we're they're looking at January. So it's that's too far. We can't wait that long. Okay. Thank Hopefully you. Hopefully, I'll have a better update at the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Carlene. Um, other questions? Anything from the public on this item? All right, uh, seeing and hearing none, then I think we're gonna move to adjournment. So thank you everyone, appreciate your time. Uh, appreciate the work that you do between meetings and um, focus on the bike pet issues. Uh, have a great holiday weekend. And if you get to live and stay on the coast this weekend, good for you. <laughs> You'll avoid the heat where I'm heading in the opposite direction to the heat. Um, so we'll see you all at our next meeting, which is scheduled for, I believe it's November. And look at my calendar. No, November, November 3rd. 3rd. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. We will see you all then. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. All right. Good night. Recording.